The Teutonic Order starts off in a really interesting position compared to most other nations in E4 at the very start. It has a strong army, quite a few forts out of which we're actually going to delete this one here since it's useless, a good economy as well, but it does start with a massive looming disaster. If we don't manage to get 40% crownlands before 1460, our nation is going to be destroyed by the Danzig Republic. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a lands from the very beginning and in order to get rid of this event we need to have 40% crownlands but once the event triggers we're going to get a reduction in our crownlands. So in order to finish it, every five years exactly, you need to take crownlands from your estates. That means we need to time it so that we are at peace and with no rebels in 49, 54, and 59. That is also going to be our main theme, but we're also going to join the HRE. Joining the HRE is actually quite easy. We have two provinces at the start that are a part of the HRE, and we are not going to give them to anyone, namely Brandenburg, in the event. What we're going to do is we're going to improve relations with the Austrians. We need to have... 149 relations in order to join the HRE, which is not really that much. You do this by improving relations once and second by sending a scornful insult to the three rivals that Austria has, with a preference for the Ottomans of course. Before you send the scornful insult, I recommend that you do it once you've finished 100 relations improvement, otherwise it's going to start going down and you're going to lose out. Speaking of rivals, your own rivals should be the Livonian Order, Novgorod, and Poland, as we will be expanding in the Livonian Order early on in the game, as we will into Novgorod and into the Polish lands. Our main focus in the first five years, however, is going to be joining the HRE, so we will declare the war on the Livonians only if we think that we have enough time to finish the war until 49. Otherwise, we're going to declare the war after 49. Alliance-wise, you have quite a few options. I recommend you go for somebody that's a little bit further away such as Brunswick and even the Saxons are pretty great of an option when it comes to alliances. We're gonna get our heir here and he's actually pretty bad but that's fine. You can't always win. There you go the Prussian Confederation has triggered giving us minus 10 crown lands and plus 10 lands for the burgers. So we have 25% roughly crown lands. We need to get it to 40%. That means take lands three times. Otherwise this game is going to be over before it even started. Continue getting your alliances here. We got the uh, Saxons and that means we also did our mission, which gave us one more Diplo rep, and which in turn means that we can get even more allies if we want to. We've gotten four allies here and what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to start getting our claim on the Livonian order once our diplomat is back. We're also going to send off our two light ships to protect trade in the Baltic trade node and we will change our merchants from transferring to collecting trade in these two trade nodes as it is going to give us a little bit more money. One more thing I recommend you do early game is that you encourage development in the state of East Prussia and that you develop the province of Königsberg twice since by having it at 15 development gives us the option of improving this to a level 2 center of trade meaning that we're going to have two level 2 centers of trade within the Baltic trade node. We've gotten our first claim on the province of Goldingen. That means we can bring back our diplomats since we cannot get any more claims on the Livonians right now. I've also recruited 1,000 more cav and 3,000 more infantry. We're not going to be hiring the free company in this game. At least not yet because we do start off with 10% professionalism. And if we do hire the free company, we lose out on our professionalism. What we will be doing, however, is we're going to get a claim on the nation of Volgast. However, this is going to be for the future because they are currently allied to the Bohemians. So until we've managed to get the Livonian lands, it's going to have to wait as this is going to be a little bit of a tougher war. August 1447 and we have 125 relations with the Austrians. We need 150 to join the HRE. So what we'll be doing is we're going to be sending the Ottomans a scornful insult which is going to give us 25 extra relations with the Austrians, bringing us over to 150. There you go, we just joined the Empire, which means that now the Poles are not going to be attacking us without having to fight the Emperor himself. That means we're kind of safe from any attacks by the Poles in the near future. That also means that after 49, we can focus our full attention on the Livonians as well as expand into the HRE, which is why I got my claim on Volgast. I'm also going to get a claim on the nation of Brandenburg since I will likely attack for the province of Berlin. 
And it's the 11th of November, 1449, so we're going to take some crown lunch here because we had less than 30 loyalty. We have rebels spawning in. So we're going to send our army to kill off these rebels, and after we've killed off the rebels, we're going to be attacking the nation of Brandenburg, not the Livonians, because in my game, Iron Jesus was not on my side and the Livonians allied Muscovy. It is temporary, the situation, however, as they will eventually get attacked by the Danes or the Muscovites will cancel the alliance. And when that happens, I'm going to be attacking them and taking their stuff. After we finish the Rebels, we're going to come back to Newmark and we're going to be attacking Brandenburg. We're also going to be co Mecklenburg, as I probably want to take Mecklenburg more than I really want to take Brandenburg at this point. This also means we can call in all of our allies since we've managed to accrue quite a few favors in the past few years. I am doing this simply because I want this to be a fast war since in 54 I need to take another 5% crown lens. Obviously we're gonna be dashing for the capital of Berlin here and by having a spy network already established in Brandenburg it should give us a little bit of a siege ability boost too. And because we cobaladrated Mecklenburg, we will be vassalizing them. We want a Mecklenburgian vassal badly. We're also going to ask him to cancel one of their rivals so we get some extra prestige. And we're taking as much money as we can take from them. With Mecklenburg on our side, their army is actually going to be ours now since the army did not get stack wiped yet. This war was easier than I expected. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give parts of Brandenburg to other nations. We're taking a little bit for ourselves, namely Berlin and Sternberg, all the money and the war reps, and we're doing this just in the hopes that Brandenburg being extra weak, other nations such as Stetten and uh, Bohemia are going to attack them as they basically have no army right now and are a very easy target. If that happens, we will be releasing Brandenburg from the two provinces that we have and we'll be feeding them back the course they got on everybody else. Remember to improve relations with your Mecklenburg vassal here. It is a 54 and we're taking 5%. Once more, we have to attack the rebels here. And afterwards, we'll be attacking the nation of Volgast and again, call in all of our allies here. This is going to be really great since uh, we're going to have to fight against Bohemia, which is really not a cakewalk, that's for sure. In fact, we're going to be attacking them right now. I'm going to set Stolp as my war target here since my allies can do a little bit of the work whilst I take care of the rebels here. If you are in the same situation like me where the nation of Volgast was allied to Bohemia, focus on the Bohemians first. Let them siege down your allies, which are weaker, so they obviously will focus on them. And when you're ready, go for the cash. Also, war reparations is important. And make them release the nation of Lusatia so that we weaken them up a little bit. And because we might also get a chance of diplomatically vassalizing Lusatia in a few years. So because of that, after the war is finished, I recommend you ally, improve relations, and keep Lusatia around. As you might be lucky enough to get them on your side diplomatically. From Volgas, because of the aggressive expansion, we can't really take too much for the time being. We're going to take just these two provinces in Kjolberg and Stolp, as well as we're going to go for war reps and trade power. So that means we're going to have to siege down a little bit more lands here. Also want to point out that because Brandenburg was attacked by Stetten, but Stetten lost the war, I just cored up these lands. I couldn't release Brandenburg separately and feed them back because Stetten didn't have a successful war. So you do have to adapt based on your situation. Volgast is now sieged down fully and uh, of course we're taking these two provinces, cash and all that goody and there's not much of a coalition either. We're now going to be sending back our troops to Danzig as we have some more rebels to fight before we take another 5% crown lens. And in November 59 we're going to take another 5% crown lens and kill off the rebels that likely will have spawned. We have 39.659 which means we have to dev up some provinces a few times. As such we're encouraging development in the West Prussian state and we're going to be developing Marienburg a few times here. Two times seems to have been enough. Now we can click on the curtail the Prussian Confederation decision. That means the Prussian Confederation event will not trigger and as such Danzig is not going to become a vassal under Poland and bring Poland in a war against us. Essentially, it means that we've basically saved our country from absolute disaster. The moment has arrived. The Livonians have had their alliance cancelled with Muscovy, which means we can attack him right now. And we also have given out the plus one admin, military, and diplo points since we don't really need to worry about our crownlands anymore. 
Take note, when they did cancel their alliance with Muscovy, everybody attacked them. We have Swedish attacking them, us, and uh, Novgorod. So you want to uh, rush for the cities they have, uh, namely rush for Letgallen and Fiefland. If we get these two, they can take the rest, and then we can vassalize Livonians and uh, feed them back the cores. And sadly, we were not able to take Fiefland, but we did take Letgallen. So I'm going to wait for the nation of Novgorod to peace out Livonia. Hopefully, they take one or two provinces, which means it's going to be enough for me to vassalize Livonia, which in turn means that I'm going to be at war with the Swedes if they don't peace out in time. And that's going to be great since it means I can take uh, Finland for myself. Also, I am going to adopt the Renaissance and I am going to go for my first ideas here since I got Admin 5. Riga's finished too, that means we can peace out Riga. We're going to go for War Reps and of course Trade Power. Gotta wait until I finish off their fleet apparently. They're not happy until I kill off their fleet. Interesting. So now it's a waiting game. We also got Diamond District in Königsberg because we have made this a 15 dev province. It gives us a chance of getting the Diamond District in Königsberg. Just as I predicted, Novgorod peaced out, they got two provinces, in the meanwhile I managed to nab Fiefland, and I am going to make them my vassal cure, all the cash that I can take, and that's going to be it, coalition wise, almost nobody, and the best part is that we are now in a defensive war against the Swedes, which means we can call in all of our allies, we don't really need to, to be fair, because we can handle the Swedes on our own, but we're going to do it, just because we can, why not? We're going to be rushing for Viborg and we will be taking all of the Finnish land in this war as well as maybe some lands in uh, Sweden proper, let's see. The Livonians still have 10,000 units by the way, so we got a vassal with an army same size as our army. We also can give out the uh, strong duchies now that we've uh, gotten two vassals. Be careful when attacking the Swedes, they are not an easy nation to deal with and they have really great units from the very beginning, so you might need to avoid them once in a while if they're stack is too big to handle. This war was insanely easy, uh, but however in the peace deal I'm not gonna go for money, I'm only gonna go for war reps and the lands that I want because I have quite a few allies in the war that I don't really want to give the money to so it's really cheap better just taking extra lands and war reparations. So now as you can see we got Teutonic Scandinavia here or Teutonic Finland whatever you want to call it. That being said we're also going to get ready for the war against the Novgorodians since we want to give back our lands to our Livonian vassal. We're going to make Novgorod our rival and we're also going to make the Swedes our rival as well as pay off the debt of Novgorod and improve relations with uh, our Mecklenburg vassal or if we cannot do that we can always just placate ruler a little bit you also can expand Teutonic quarter lands now and you want to do as many of these missions as possible since when we tag switch over to Prussia it is gonna be a completely different mission tree that we can take advantage of and we're gonna be attacking Novgorod even though they're allied to Denmark we have to and we're gonna set the reconquest of core as our war goal we have to because they've just been attacked by uh, the nation of Muscovy here. And unless we take these now, there is a very high possibility that Muscovy is going to take our lands. And I'm not cool with that. Also, they will not be able to take 100% in the war goal. I mean, they're not going to be able to fully annex Novgorod, that is. So once they make their peace deal, I might be able to vassalize Novgorod myself. Which means that I could feed them back the cores in uh, all of Muscovy here. And of course, my ear has to die. Not a big deal. He was pretty trash anyway, so might as well die, I guess. And of course, we got an even worse one, which died instantly. Wow. Third time's a charm. Let's see. And this is a 3 2 4. That's decent. That's decent. Let's call him Decent Kick. Sadly, we are at war with the Danes, which means that we're going to have to watch out for our navies not getting stomped. Since they do have bigger navies than us, it means that also Norway's in the war against us, but that's really not a massive deal. We do have a better economy than they do overall, so we're gonna have to play this smart. First off, we're gonna have to wait for the uh, Novgorodians to peace out Muscovy before we enforce our demands. Muscovy peaced out Novgorod, and I'm gonna peace them out too, I got 100%. I managed to peace out the Danes by giving them white peace. If I stayed in the war for longer, it would have actually cost me more, as I would have had to go into debt so that I can hire mercenaries, but I still don't have any loans yet, and I don't plan on taking any since I don't need to in these wars. I'm gonna be taking back my lands in the north here, and I'm gonna make a dash line here to stop the Muscovites from going into the north anymore. Coalition-wise, it's just Novgorod and Muscovy, no big deal, since I'm gonna be attacking both of them again once my truce is over and Muscovy is likely going to be my very next target right after I get a little bit more manpower and maybe even get a few mercs 
to speed up this war. I also took Narwa directly because I actually got a coronet by occupying the province from the event. This can happen sometimes, doesn't always happen, so keep that in mind. Otherwise, I would have just given it to uh, the Livonians. I'm going to speed this up a little bit so you guys get a rough idea of what the Teuton should look a few years from now. And boom, you just got Teutonicized. That is correct, we basically have replaced all of Novgorod here, taken some lands from the Muscovites, integrated our vassals, eventually we managed to actually vassalize the uh, Brandenburgians after they got eaten up and fed back most of their cores, and even we're integrating them right now, there you go. Let's make this a full state, of course, with all the appropriate rights. Our empire starts from Prignitz, ends up in Kola. I guess you could say it's a Toll Empire, or much snake, much, much snake. In any case, by 1520s, this is what your Teutons at least should look like. After a few extra wars against the Poles and the Muscovites, make sure you destroy their economies and establish yourself as the dominant power in the Baltic area. I've got a few extra vassals in Verdun, Thuringia, and uh, Riga. I mainly got the nation of Thuringia here as a vassal so I can feed back the cores. Same thing with Verdun. And economically speaking, we're doing amazing we're getting 13 ducats on the plus so after you've established yourself in this area what do you need to do next it really depends I have two options right now I can convert to Protestant by going here and clicking on Protestant and then I can simply form the nation of Prussia since I already have admin tech 10 and the provinces that I need or I can wait until I get the Baltic Crusader achievement. I just need to take out the rest of Muscovy, Kazan, and the Crimean parts and have all of these provinces converted to Catholic for the achievement, which is what I'm going for, by the way. But if you don't want to go for that, you want to go for a different game, you can always just switch to Protestant, form Prussia, and profit. Why do I say profit? Well, there is a very good reason, and it's tied to the ideas that you get. Before we go into ideas, remember, for later expansion, finish off the Scandinavian lands, take all of Denmark and Sweden, expand into the HRE whenever you get a chance, and of course, finish off everybody in the Russian slash Commonwealth areas, as this is rightful Prussian clay. By the way, guys, if you enjoyed this Teutonic snake here, you can find it over on my Twitch channel. I am literally doing a Teutonic Order live stream as we speak. Click the link in the description or in the comment section and watch me play this Teutonic Order save live over on Twitch. Idea-wise, you should go for quantity ideas first, followed up by economic ideas and divine ideas, which is a specific idea for monastic orders. I recommend going for divine as it is really great. You get fire damage received minus, morale of armies plus 10, and a few other really great ideas such as manpower. And it mixes in well with the other idea sets. You can get minus 5 years of separatism and core creation cost with economic. I went the economic first because my leader was a 6 admin leader and I was getting basically 14 admin points at that point in the early game per month. But in your case, likely that's not going to happen. So go for quantity, economic, divine ideas. Follow up by religious ideas and trade or even diplomatic. Going for these idea sets will set you out on a path of absolute destruction and if you do form Prussia later on after you get the achievement and you also go for quality ideas with the divine quantity quality mix in you're gonna have the strongest army around albeit that would be a little bit of an overkill you already will be the strongest nation no point in overdoing it before we finish the video i want to show you guys a neat trick that you can do in your games namely how to form both prussia and russia if you don't know you culturally convert your nation to muscovite once you have 50 percent or above of your stated provinces as Muscovite. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that all of our Muscovite lands are stated whilst the other lands are not stated. So for example, Novgorod is not stated. I've unstated a few provinces in this area as well because, well, I need to make sure that I have above 50% Muscovite. Once that happens, we're gonna click on culture shift and that means we are now a Muscovite primary culture nation, which also means that we can form a Russia, but we can still form Prussia. All we need to do is switch on over to Protestant and there you go both Prussia and Russia are formable by us and we can go Prussia first yes get the ideas and we have the sweet Prussian ideas then we go Russia second and we're not gonna go for the ideas because we want the Prussian ideas so technically we are Russia but we have Prussian ideas 